you guys will try to cancel anything and potentially send it to hell, but the one person you can't cancel is the comedian by the name of Dave Chappelle. Let's discuss. y'all it's your boy Beasley here hope you all are staying cool coming collected out there so I'm coming to you guys today in my pajamas you know I'm up late and I just wanted to go ahead and randomly talk about Dave Chappelle's latest stand-up on Netflix now y'all Dave Chappelle since day one even before the special released he has been facing immense backlash from the LGBT community and you know I'm a proud member of that community and I will say I watched the stand-up four times four times and I was looking high and low and I couldn't find what the reason for the backlash was y'all I, I gotta keep it real now let me cover my bases real quick I am a proud member of the LGBT community I love the fact that I am a gay man I, I accept myself to this day I wouldn't have came down here or came up any other way and not to get very deep with you guys I will say like you know I'm gonna talk my mess for a little bit like I I'm slowly starting to fall in love with the person that I am. You know, growing up, I was taught to hate myself, like on all facets. You know, I was fat, black, and gay. So, on all those fronts, like, I was like, it was like, I was cognitively, like, society was programming me to have a whole bunch of self hate. And I came through all of that. All of that. And I don't mean to go all woke and spiritual on you guys, but, you know, I feel like we chose the people that we wanted to be, if that makes sense. Like, we came down to this earth, God's green earth, for a um, 3D experience, you know, for us to learn. No matter how ghetto it may turn out, we came down here because we wanted a human experience. And I feel like we chose the individual we wanted to be, and we chose, like, the path that we wanted to go down. Like, I kind of feel like before you come down to earth, like, God or whoever lays out, like, okay, you choose this individual, this is how your life is gonna be laid out. And if you veer from that path, that's on you. But I, I feel like I chose this body for a reason. And I'm really starting to fall in love with who I am becoming because I am a damn good individual. I'm proud to be gay and I, and I am absolutely 100% here to stay. But I will also say on the transgender front, I am a transgender ally in the community. I've said this before, the LGBT community, the problem with us is that we were all lumped together because we were the freaks and geeks of society. We were lumped together without really knowing each other because we were all different. So we were expected to like come together and uplift each other even though within the community there's not really a whole bunch of uplifting each other going on if that makes sense. But I am a transgender ally even though I don't really have any like close transgender friends. I have had and do have transgender coworkers that I work with in the past and in the present and also uh, my cousin Brittany who does my hair who needs to answer the phone because I need to set up an appointment I need to get my hair done for next week she is roommates with a transgender woman and I talk to her every time I see her and it's just like a normal casual conversation transgender people are regular everyday people they just they became the person that they felt who they were on the inside they brought that on the outside like they, that's what it is with transgender people is bringing the inner to the outside world and them expressing and living in their full 100% truth. But shifting the conversation back to Dave Chappelle, this stand-up came out and it seems like every day has just been nothing but backlash after backlash after backlash. Like, the LGBT community are really coming for his neck. Not everybody, but like, you know... The ones that have the most power in said community are the ones coming for Dave Chappelle's neck. And after watching this special for over four times, like, I'm just not... I don't understand what, what everybody is mad at. Now, throughout this stand-up, here are some points where I feel like some people in the gay community, in the LGBT community as a whole, probably took offense to Dave Chappelle. From the very beginning, he asked the question, if gays can be racist. Yes, they can. And going back to the people that have the power in the LGBT community, the power lies within the white people in the LGBT community. Like, let's keep it real. He said that he respected the LGBT community, but 
He also made a comparison with the black community as in black people kind of like have a jealousy towards the LGBT community because they were able to get their movement off the ground and running. And the main reason we were able to get the LGBT community to a place where it is today where they have a lot of power in society is because it was backed by white gay men. White gay men are the reason why the LGBT community holds power in society because white men hold the power in America. And that's why we were able to kind of like drive everything home for the community as a whole because white people, white men namely, were at the forefront of the whole entire movement. Even though um, if you go back all, if you go back to the days of like the Stonewall and everything, that was led by uh, black and brown transgender women and men and black gay men, but I digress. But back to the question of if gay people can be racist, absolutely 100% they can be racist. I've actually, I, like, I, I think a lot of black gays have gone through this. Like if you have downloaded the app Grinder at least one time, you've encountered a racist white gay one time or two. And then also with the fact that there's a lot of segregation within the community, especially within the gays. Like, why do we have a regular pride and then also we have a black gay pride that comes a little bit after that? Like, why are both the prides segregated? Is it because um, of the music selections or is it because, like, there's deep-rooted issues between black gays and white gays? Like, there's always been a whole entire issue that it's, it's always swept under the rug within the community. Like, nobody talks about the segregation in the gay community. Nobody talks about the racism in the gay community because a lot of the white gays can they feel that since they are part of a marginalized group that was immensely oppressed in the past they feel like you know any type of prejudice every any type of prejudices they have against another race it, it, it's just like Ray Charles to it because you know they're oppressed themselves so they can get away with oppressing other people within that same marginalized group like a lot of things in the gay community get swept under the rug and he also told a story about how um, he got into it with a gay person at a bar, like a big white gay person at a bar, and just because the white gay person didn't like what he said, that white person, the white gay person, ended up calling the cops on him. And he brought up a huge fact that like gays are only minorities until it's time for them to be white again, and that's absolutely true. Like there's a problem in the community with the white gay men to where like if you even have a lick of offending them. They, they don't want to hear anything else you have to say. They don't want to hear anything. They don't, they're not open for a conversation. They have, like, and I'm not speaking for every single white gay because there's a lot of gays that are um, more self-aware, mainly, like, the older gays. The, the older gays get it, and Dave Chappelle even said that in his stand-up, too, that, like, he doesn't like these newer gays. They're too sensitive, and they absolutely are. Like, even though, I mean, I'm 29, so I guess I can be considered a newer gay. I'm not sure, but... Uh, the new gays are very sensitive. The community is very sensitive as a whole, and I feel like a lot of the backlash came off of um, emotion and PTSD. Because, you know, we have PTSD. Gay people have a lot of trauma from the way they were raised and brought up. You know, the bullying, the um, being made fun of for being different than everybody else. Some people having, like, internalized homophobia because they wish they were like everybody else so they wouldn't have to go through a bunch of BS. But... A lot of people operated off of emotion and, you know, Dave Chappelle, even though he has said some problematic things in the past, he recognized, he actually even brought up and recognized how problematic he was in the past and how, like, certain individuals got him to change and, like, take a good look at himself and see that um, he had, like issues with the gays. But Dave Chappelle recognizes that he was problematic in the past and he has had individuals that he actually listened to that were able to hold the mirror in front of him and make him see how things he would say could be deemed as homophobic or transphobic. He recognizes his faults but at the end of the day my thing is we're getting to a point where we can't talk about anybody. We're getting to a point where it's like the LGBT community is like above approach at this point. It's like, it's almost like the oppressed is becoming the oppressor. Now, I'm probably going to make a lot of y'all mad about saying that, but it's the absolute truth. Like, like I said, I support the community 100%. I love being a part of the community. But we can't just like continue to bully people into thinking a certain way and not educating them when they ask to be educated as well. Like, you, we... I'm going on a little tangent, but it's like we expect 
well, y'all expect people to like automatically get with the program when like, no, some people are really trying to learn the ins and outs of like being a transgender person and learn the ins and outs and the struggles that gay people face. But it's like the gay people and trans people today are like, no, you should already know this. You should already know what's going on. You should already know what we go through and the struggles we face since you guys oppressed us for so long. But the people that didn't oppress y'all and didn't really have grow up like around gay people and trans people, they're kind of just like confused like, whoa, like I'm really just trying to get to know you and get to know the struggles you face and what you're going through. But I, like I said, we the oppressed are slowly becoming the oppressor in society. The LGBT community, Y'all are slowly, 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 even though you guys are having power, you step into this power and you don't really know how to fully like wield it correctly. Like, I feel like the gays and the transgender people and the lesbians and all that, I feel like they're going so hard against people that genuinely do want to learn and genuinely do want to like understand. He also made jokes about the feminist movement, the feminist movement and the Me Too movement. You know, the feminist movement in the past, he made a joke about how Sojourner Truth came to Susan B. Anthony and they didn't let her speak. They didn't say anything like the feminist movement only benefited white women. Like we got to keep it real. Like black women were the last people to vote in this country. The feminist movement was like a deal made, like a movement for white women to be able to vote. And then once white women gained that ability to vote, they just abandoned black women altogether. So it's like feminism, yes, but black feminism, oh no. And that history repeated itself with the Me Too movement. Like people like, um, what was her name? Rose McGowan and whoever else. Like, the Me Too movement was started by a black woman, like two black women, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But she hijacked that whole entire movement and, like, made it a whole entire, basically, like, a white feminist movement 2.0. Like, that's what the Me Too movement was. Like I said, Dave Chappelle made jokes about more than just the LGBT community. I just feel like the, the gay jokes were, like, the main focus. They weren't even really gay jokes. It was just, like... It was just like poking fun at the community, like what he sees, like and what he sees is pretty much the same things that I see from somebody who's on the inside of the community. The history always tends to repeat itself, like white women, they may march and fight, but honestly and truthfully, like y'all just want, you know, rights for y'all. Like y'all y'all don't care about black women when y'all do these feminist movements. Like y'all y'all don't give a shit. Like you just got to keep it real. And that's another thing that segregated black women and white women. Like it's kind of hard. Like I will say I'm not a woman so I can't entirely speak for y'all's community, but like from the outside looking in, there's always an underlying issue between white women and black women. And then on top of that, you know, the whole entire black fishing, you know, black woman, white women taking black women's features, black women taking white women's features. Like there's just a whole bunch of mess between white feminism and black feminism, white women and black women. He also said in the stand up that like people only label him transphobic based off of this one time where he actually was doing stand up and he was he said that he was like pretty ignorant. Like he was saying like the T word, like he was going in and it wasn't until one person stood up and called him out on everything that one person then went and um, talked to a news article and labeled him transphobic and ever since then he's gotten the transphobic moniker and it's gotten to a point where like people in the transgender community, some people they don't even give him the chance anymore. They don't even watch his stand-ups. They automatically just equate him to being transphobic, homophobic, problematic, etc., etc., you name it. And that's what happened with this stand-up. Like, I feel like a lot of people, like I said earlier, have PTSD with his past jokes, and they pass judgment every, every time he um, tends to talk about the community to where people who didn't even watch the stand-up automatically just write him off as homophobic, transphobic, and he said something that pissed them off when in actuality, almost everything he said in the stand-up made sense, at least to me. I think another joke that really pissed off the uh, trans community was the fact that he did say that gender is a fact. And y'all may be mad at me again, but gender is a fact, man and women. Like, if it wasn't a fact, then nobody, like, you wouldn't be able to become transgender. Like, we would all just be one gender. And, like, transgender people, I, I, I need y'all to realize, like, I love y'all to pieces. I really do. And I mean this, like, with sincerity. If you are a transgender woman, you were born a man. 
Like you were born a man, that's that's just what it is. Like I've said this in one of my past videos, like I don't know where we got away from common sense, but in order to change genders, you have to be one gender previously in order to go to the next gender. Like that that's just common sense, people. Like I don't understand the mental gymnastics we have created around this issue. Like it's okay, you were born a man, you felt like you needed to become a woman because, you know, we all start out in the womb as a woman. So a lot of people feel like, no, like this, this, um, this genitalia, this penis was not supposed to grow. That's how a lot, pe a lot of uh, transgender people feel and that's why they go ahead and they get the hormones and get the surgery to, re to reverse what, um, their, what gender they were as an outcome. So, <laughs> gender is a fact. And I feel like that's another uh, thing that the uh, transgender community got mad at him about. Like, I, I'm sorry, y'all. Like I said, y'all may be mad, but I'm just keeping it real. And I think another joke that pissed off the trans community was the fact that he, um... <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to laugh. I'm sorry, y'all. But he called, uh, you know, you know how they have, like, the Impossible Burger and, like, Beyond Meat. It's, like, plant-based meat. <laughs> he ended up calling transgender vagina, like, Beyond Vagina. Impossible Vagina. Like, <laughs> that's not blood. That's beet juice. Like, Okay, now that I can see why some transgender people took a fist to that. I mean, I laughed at it. I got to keep it real. I did. It was funny to me. But with that joke, I could see how some transgender people like took a fist to that. But at the same time, you had to get really, really far into the stand-up in order to get to that point. Like, that was pretty much almost towards the ass end of the stand-up. And with all that being said, he lastly told a story about a friend, Daphne, who was a transgender woman that he met. She ended up, um, he gave her a shot. Like, he ended up letting her open for her at a comedy club. And she ended up bombing the whole entire performance. But however, um, he saw something in her and really, like came to her and took her under his wing like he wanted her to like like he was going to coach her and like give her pointers and tips but when his, uh, his comedy stand up sticks and stones came out and a lot of people a lot of from people from the lgbt community took offense to that stand up she was the one trans person that came out and defended him and she got backlash from her own community like she hopped on twitter and said that dave chappelle was an amazing individual that was her dear friend and yet, people from the trans community and also, like, the gay community, like, went in on her so bad to where she ended up committing suicide. Now, I don't know if that's just, like, the sole reason she committed suicide, and but because he didn't really detail if anything else was going on in her life, but... He said that was, like, the, one of the main factors that led her to uh, killing herself, and then she ended up like uh being survived by a daughter and he ended up setting a trust front up for her and you can see like the pure raw emotion that he had whenever he, uh he told that story about Daphne like he was hurt to the core about her death and my thing is how can he be labeled as transphobic when he had a dear friend that was transgender that he loved dear to his heart and with all that being said y'all I just don't see where the backlash was coming from. Like, I don't see what really warranted the backlash. Like I've said, like, the people that are really going so hard against this stand-up are the people that didn't even really watch it. Now, people currently in present day are trying to get it pulled from Netflix, and Netflix said, uh-uh, bitch, <laughs> we not doing that. Like, Dave Chappelle is good over here. I mean, of course, the stand-up is still doing numbers. I mean, like I said, I watched it four times, but... It's just, I, I'm, I'm, transgender people, the people that watch me, I want you to drop down in the comments and let me know if you were personally offended by Dave Chappelle's stand-up. Gay people too, let me know. Like, what offended you about Dave Chappelle's stand-up? Because I, like, I really tried to, like, study and see what was going on throughout the whole entire stand-up and what made people mad, and I just did not see it, y'all. I just didn't see it. Like, like, I'm sorry. I was not offended by any of this. Like, that, that's just my personal opinion. And Dave Chappelle will always be my favorite comedian of all time. I, like, like, I swear, y'all, comedy is a dying genre. Like, you can't... Like, granted, these comedians do need to have a form of self-awareness, yes. But it's like, damn. Like, the people are nailed to the cross once their feelings are hurt. It's comedy. It's comedy.
But those are my views on the whole entire stand up. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm gonna come at you guys with some more content. Oh.